Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Well, thank you for joining us today. We're so happy to have you. Today I would like to talk about something that, as far as I know, I've never really done in a proper teaching like this. It's something that I have talked about, of course, and encourage people to do. But I want to talk to you today about uh, personal evangelism, about how we are all called to share the gospel with people. You don't have to have a reverend in front of your name to be a person who's called to tell other people about Jesus. And um, I think people can go from one extreme to another. They can either be so bold that they're actually bordering on being obnoxious and trying to just make everybody they see love Jesus, which I think one of the first things to remember is that you cannot make somebody that's not hungry eat. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And uh, I've noticed in the Gospels that Jesus never went around begging people to let him help them. He always helped people that wanted to be helped. And uh, so I think we can go from that extreme to just not being sensitive at all, sensitive at all to who we're talking to or how we're talking to them, all the way to being just really frightened of sharing our faith with anybody. I also believe that God gifts us in different ways. I mean, I really believe that, that in, invo that's involved in evangelism just like it is in the other gifts that we have. For example, I think some people are probably very anointed to go out in the streets and preach. You know, I'm not. I think a lot of people uh, can just corner almost anybody and talk to them about Jesus. I had to find my own I, comfort zone is a word that I'm going to use, but I want to make it plain that I'm not saying that we always have to be comfortable with everything that we do. We need to follow the spirit, whether we're comfortable or not. But I do believe if we're gifted and anointed by God to do something, that it's not going to make us miserable and we're not going to, it's not going to be really, really hard for us to do. It's going to be something that's more natural. So first of all, I want to make it clear that all of us, are called to do this. Every Christian has a biblical responsibility to desire to and to work with the Holy Spirit toward leading other people into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And there's great scriptures, 2 Corinthians 5, 18. But all things are from God, who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself. So God used Jesus to reconcile us to him. I love what the Amplified says. He brought us into harmony with himself. There's so many people in the world that don't have harmony with God. They don't have agreement with God. And we want to try to help them if at all possible. And then he gave to us the ministry of reconciliation. Now listen to this because this is going to be important to this teaching. That by word and deed, by word and deed, we might aim to bring others into harmony with him. So I think that the two need to work together. I think that telling people is important, but I think that showing people is important. Well, you could just be the nicest person on the planet, but if you're not... If you're not that way because Christ is working in your life, then that's still not going to lead that person to Jesus. They may think you're nice, but it's still not going to lead them to the Lord. Likewise, you could be a bold enough person to tell everybody you meet about the gospel and what Jesus has done for you and how they need to receive him. But then if you don't have proper deeds in your life to back that up, it almost becomes really worse than if you just didn't say anything at all. I think one of the big, big problems we have in our society today is that Christians in many cases don't go out into the world and show the fruit of the Spirit 
and behave according to what they say they believe. And so I think that God has got his people planted right now today absolutely everywhere. I believe in every factory, in every shopping center, in every office, in every school. I believe that there's believers planted in all these places. I felt like God really showed me that one time that I've got my people everywhere, but they need to turn the lights on. And so we don't want to be like uh, really bold around our Christian friends. And then when you get out around regular people, become like somebody else. So in verse 20, 2 Corinthians 5, 20, we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. Don't you love that? We as Christ's personal representatives, you are a personal representative of Jesus Christ. And God wants to use every one of us every single day to try to draw somebody else into relationship with him. And I think that that can be done in many different ways. So we beg you for his sake to lay hold of this divine favor and be reconciled to God. Romans 1.16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. So just wanted to lay that foundation that we're all called to be part of bringing people to Jesus Christ. Every single one of us, no believer left out. We all have the ministry. There's two ministries every believer has, intercession and reconciliation. You all have a ministry. But we do want to do it properly. We don't want to be ashamed, but neither do we want to just, well, as the world would say, beat people over the head with our Bible and try to cram Jesus down their throat because that doesn't always work very well either. So uh, Jesus said that he would make us fishers of men. So just an interesting thought here. Like all kinds of fish in the ocean, rivers, and seas, they all need different kinds of bait if you're going to catch them. <laughs> and see, I think that that's the way the world is. The same thing doesn't work for everybody. And so we can go and learn a bunch of evangelism principles, and every single one of them might be good, and every single one of them might have its proper place. But if you try the wrong thing on the wrong person, it actually could drive them further away rather than bringing them closer to. So we don't want to just feel like that, you know, we have this obligation to fill, and so we're just doing these things without being sensitive to how God wants us to go about it. Also, some fish only bite in certain seasons. And I thought that was interesting, because we might be trying to lead somebody to Christ, a friend or a stranger or whatever, and it just might not be the right season for them. Now, you say, well, I mean, isn't every season right for people to receive Christ? Well, what I mean by that is I think a person has to be at a certain point in their life. They either have to be desperate enough to be ready for a change or they have to have been in a situation where God has dealt with their heart. They don't even have to be in desperate trouble. I remember one woman telling me one time, she said, you know, I just, I had a great life. But she said, I just didn't really have peace. There was nothing in particular I was even upset about. I just really didn't have peace. And that was what led me to seek a relationship with God. Well, there's millions of people out in the world like that. They just don't have peace. They're not happy. And I think one of the things that Christians can do, every Christian can do this, everybody watching, every one of us in here, if we will just purpose every day to go out into the world and be happy and peaceful. Now, that, you know, just be happy and peaceful. That's a new assignment. Get out in the world and especially come to work. <laughs> happy and peaceful. Because the world is not like that. They're not happy. They're not peaceful. And so we're in the world but not of the world. And I think one of the things that will get people's attention is if you're always peaceful no matter what's, go what's going on. And if you're happy... I'm not talking about silly, giddy, happy, but if you have a consistent joy, people are going to start to wonder, well, what do you have that I don't have? And what is it that's different about you? And I really believe that if we just get out in the world and kind of make them hungry, you know, we're supposed to be salt and light. 
So if we, if our lives make people hungry, you may have heard me say this before, but I never had any peace in my life. I grew up in a home of turmoil and, and shouting and arguing and anger all the time. And I really, honestly, I can tell you, I didn't know what peace was. I really did not know what it felt like to have peace. Well, when I married Dave, he's just the epitome of peace. And for a while, it almost kind of annoyed me because I thought, well, you know, you need to get upset with me about these problems that we have. And he wouldn't do that. But then after a while, I got hungry for what he had. I thought, well, if he can have that, then I can have that. So every one of you watching today, I just commission you to go out into the world, be happy, be peaceful. And then when people ask you, how can you be so happy with what's going on? How can you be so peaceful? Why are you not afraid about what's going on in the world? Then you have an opportunity to say, you know what? I used to be like that. I think it's always good to tell people, I used to be like that. Don't make people think that you're perfect and you don't have any kind of problems. I used to be like that. I had a lot of fear in my life. I worried all the time. I was upset all the time. But then I was introduced to Jesus Christ and I found out that he is my peace and my hope is in him. And really, to be honest, you don't even have to say any more than that. And if the person's interested, then they're going to ask you another question. And they may not even ask you then. It may be later. But they will ask you. Now, I want to say something. I want you to get this. My son-in-law said this to me, and I thought this was very good. He said, he's a fisherman. And he said, I try to get my kids to go fishing with me. But he said, they don't want to go fishing. They want to go catching. <laughs> and see, I think that's what a lot of Christians want to do. They're not willing to invest the time that might need to be invested in somebody's life to get them to the point where they will take the bait. And so I guess I just want to say today, are you willing to invest some time in people's lives? You know what? Sometimes we may have to be, I remember watching my niece saying this one time, he's a teacher that I have really enjoyed that's no longer alive, but he said, if we want to really help other people, we've got to meet them where they're at. We can't try to make them be where we're at. Now, by saying that, I don't mean you need to go sit in the local tavern every night because that's where the person's at that you want to minister to. But on the other hand, that doesn't mean you couldn't have lunch with them. It doesn't mean that you couldn't be a friend of theirs because people in the world are in a desperate situation. And we need every day, I want to encourage you, every day of your life when you go out, and this even reminded me to start doing it again, Father, I want you to use me today to draw somebody closer to you. Show me somebody that I can help. Put somebody in my path that I can help. The first thing that we have to do is want to do this and be open to doing it. And then I think when we're around people that are not saved, before you barrel in and just start trying to tell them about Jesus, I think you need to invest some time praying for them. Let's get them into the right season so they'll bite. Father, soften their heart. Cause them to be dissatisfied with the lifestyle that they have. Cause them to be hungry for you. Make them open, Lord. Open their eyes. I've been realizing lately, people in the world, so many people in the world, they are just absolutely blind. They just don't get it. You know, I think sometimes, how can you, how can you possibly give your life to trying to get rid of God? I just don't understand it. And they just, their eyes are blinded. They just don't see. So we need to pray more that God will open people's eyes and that they'll see what they're missing and what's available to them. Now, I'll tell you a little story. Um, when I was a very young Christian, just kind of starting out in my, what I call my serious walk with God, uh, I attended a church that was really, really big on street evangelism and passing out gospel tracts. And actually, I still have one right here. Smile, Jesus loves you. <laughs> and uh, one summer, I took a group of women, and we put 10,000 of these under windshields, went to the, went to the grocery store par parking lot down in Fenton. And, you know, I believe that that ended up helping somebody. I felt like that was something God put on my heart, and I did that. But another thing that I did that I wasn't comfortable with that I did because the church 
kind of made us feel like, well, if you didn't, then you didn't really love God. We have to be really careful that we don't make people feel guilty because they don't want to do something the way that we are gifted to do it. And I want to say that again. Sometimes if we have a gift to do something, it's so easy to expect everybody else to do that and to even be judgmental toward them if they don't want to. And so one of the things they wanted us to do was go out on the streets on Saturday morning. We went to downtown St. Louis, go up to people, say, Jesus loves you. Can I give you this? And so I went. Well, I'll never forget the first person I held one out to slapped it out of my hand. So to be, I'm just going to be honest. I'm not comfortable for me with that kind of personal evangelism. Now, I kind of thought, is this a good thing to say or not to say on TV? But I think it's good because I feel like that we need to realize that God wants to use all of us, but he, want, he does use us in different ways. Because there's all kinds of different people out there that are going to respond to all different kinds of bait. And if everybody's fishing with the same kind of bait, then there's going to be a lot of fish that are never going to be caught. So we want to be really sensitive to, okay, how can God use me? I actually got to the point, and I'm telling you the truth, I mean, this has been like 37 years ago, but I got to the point where they pushed us so much to make sure that everybody we came in contact with, we some way told them about Jesus. I got to the point that I didn't even want to go out of the house because none of it was spirit-led. It was more like guilt-motivated. Well, I guess I don't love Jesus enough if I'm not willing to tell somebody about him. And it's important to me that every person is involved in personal evangelism. But it's also important to me that you find the right way for you and the right way for the person that you're trying to minister to. So I'm going to give you a few suggestions. So it should be comfortable for pretty much everybody. Invite people to go to church with you. Simple, yes or no. no. Um, I... I was born again at nine years old when I went to church with relatives that we were visiting out of town. So you never know what God may use. So there's nothing wrong with putting out the invitation. Um, if you're in a small group Bible study, invite people to go. You know, that's, that's an atmosphere where people can be comfortable. Uh, if you come to my conferences, invite somebody to come along. And I tell people this, and they always laugh, but it's true. Offer to take them out to dinner. I'm telling you what, people will do almost anything if you feed them. <laughs> so you take them somewhere good and then say, we're going to go to this conference. And, you know, you never can tell. You can think, well, what are they going to think? Joyce is pretty wild. <laughs> well, you know, what are they going to think? You know what? This is where we need to be bold. It, it's not our job to care about what people think. It's our job to put out an invitation and you're not forcing anybody. They can say yes, they can say no, but at least you've given them that opportunity. So I just want to really encourage you to be involved in some way. Another thing that you can do is keep booklets, books, or gospel tracts, or whatever you're comfortable with, somewhere close to you at all times when you go out. Like my daughter Sandra, she carries a box full of my books in the trunk of her car. So just as an example, she's checking out at a drugstore. She's real friendly. How are you today? Um, this is not a very good day for me. I'm kind of having a rough time. You know, we need to be equipped to say something more than that's too bad. You know, we have people's answer. And so uh, at least say, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'll pray for you. And then do it. You know, even just telling somebody you'll pray for them could say something to them about God caring about them. Or, you know, I'm sorry that you're going through such a hard time. Just remember God loves you. You know, simple things like that. I don't think that we should be afraid to do those kinds of things. Now, caring about what people think can get in our way, and it can be a big problem. But so many times she'll go back out to her car and get one of my books and take it back in. Now, she's got an advantage. My mom wrote this book, and I thought you'd enjoy it. But, you know, you can say, a very close friend of mine wrote this book, and I thought that you would enjoy it. Are you willing to go fishing, or do you just want to go catching? I think for me, and this is me, I, the best way for me to do personal evangelism is to 
live my life in front of people. Not be fearful or backward about letting them know that I'm a Christian. You can't be around me very long and not know that I love God. Because I think just talking about him in our everyday conversation. I'll pray about that or I prayed about that or I'm so glad that we can put our trust in God. Just little statements that are just you. If we kind of throw those seeds out there, it lets people know where you stand. And then be sensitive to where that person's at. Are they ready for me to say something to them or not? Do I need to pray for a while for their heart to be opened? Do I need to, to pray that God will soften their heart? Sometimes you're just watering a seed that somebody else planted. Sometimes you plant a seed, you never get to see the harvest. Somebody else comes along and waters it, and then eventually God brings a harvest. All we need to do is just be open to God to do the things that he wants us to do. Let me finish this up today with Matthew 5. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do men light a lamp and put it under a peck measure, which would be like a bushel basket. But they put it on a lampstand and it gives light to all in the house. So don't go to church on Sunday and get your light turned on. And then go to work on Monday and stick your head under a bushel basket. So nobody is going to judge you or criticize you because you're a Christian. Let your light shine before men. That they may see your moral excellence and your praiseworthy, noble, and good deeds. And then recognize and honor and praise and glorify your Father who is in heaven. I teach people this all the time, but one of the best ways, one of the greatest ways that you can minister to a sinner is to do something for them when they have a need. Especially if it's somebody that maybe has been a little bit nasty to you, or critical or judgmental toward you. Now, I, I want to get this into this message too. You know, one of the things that we can be very guilty of as Christians is surrounding ourselves with Christians. <laughs> Because that's comfortable for us. And never putting ourselves in a position where we can minister to an unbeliever. Because frankly there just aren't that many of them in our lives. It's easy for us to just have our little Christian culture. With our little Christian language and our Christian books. And our Christian CDs. And our Christian friends. And our Christian music. And never get outside of that realm. Pastor Mike, our staff pastor here told me something one time that I really love. He's like, he, he works out on a regular basis. And I said, is there any reason why you don't work out at home? And he said, I purposely go to the gym because that's one of the few places where I'm around unbelievers. And I love that. And there's a couple of other things that he does, which I won't mention. He, he purposely goes to these people instead of choosing a Christian that could perform that same service. He purposely goes to them because he wants to be available in case God needs him. Amen. Now he recently, he told me for this year, he said, God has really put it on my heart this year that he wants me to love more strangers. And I said, I'm glad he told you because I'm still working on my friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. But so as Christians, we can surround ourselves with so many Christians that we never get a chance to minister to unbelievers. Let me close with this verse, Matthew 9. I said I was going to close with the last one, but as you can see, I didn't tell the truth. Matthew 9, 10. And as Jesus reclined at the table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and especially wicked sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. Can you imagine how the religious folks of his day responded to that? He sits down at a table and here are all these preeminently wicked sinners come and sit down with him and he just welcomes them and just like they're just the coolest guys on the earth. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said, Why does your master eat with tax collectors and those that are preeminently sinful? But when Jesus heard it, he replied, Those who are strong and well have no need of a physician, but those who are weak and sick. So let me just say this, and this is to everybody watching at home and, and all of us here. Let's be open to letting God use us. I cannot even imagine what would happen if every person who is a Christian would every day before they go out of the house say, God, put somebody in my path today that I can, that you can use me to help lead them to you. Let me be an example to someone today. Show me what I can do today to help somebody 
come into your kingdom. And I'm telling you, if you just start with that and go out in the world and be happy and hopeful, it won't be long and you'll be having great opportunities to lead people to the Lord. Now listen, today, many of you watching, maybe you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus yourself. And you're like, well, I wish somebody would come along and personally evangelize me. Well, that's what I'm doing right now. And I want you to know that Jesus died for you. He loves you. As believers in Christ, we all know the importance of the Great Commission. But did you know that only 7% of people actively share their faith with others? Unfortunately, that's the reality we live in, but we can change it. We invite you to join us and millions of other believers around the world for Global Outreach Day. The mission of Global Outreach Day is simple. Share the gospel with at least one person on that special day. As Christians, we are all called to share what Christ has done in our lives, but it doesn't have to be so difficult. The only thing that God really requires is a willing and obedient heart. You don't have to be Billy Graham or Joyce Meyer. You just have to be you. So pray about who God wants you to talk to. Make a plan and follow through. One day, one person, one message.